in the last class we have discussed about gandhi's career and early activism in india under that we have looked into the book written by gandhi hind swaraj which describes his philosophy his concept of swaraj and his critique of modernization or the modernity we have also under underlooked the three ventures taken by gandhi in champaran ahmedabad and kheda in this class we will be looking into the political movements of gandhi where i'll be starting with the year 1919 that which year has been described as the gandhian phase in the indian national movement so uh, while starting with it i want to emphasize that the year 1919 was very important or it was a watershed in the modern indian history the reason for that is there were three important changes that took place in the year 1919 the first important thing is that the montague james board reforms or the indian council act 1919 was enacted in this year uh, this reform or this act will be studied in a detailed manner in the module fifth so for a time being we could skip the montague james ford reforms and we could move on what the other important events took place in this year apart from these reforms the second important thing that took place was the repressive rawlet act which was introduced in india in that year and the uh, amritsar massacre that occurred at chaliyanwala bag and the third important thing was a new course of a political action emerged that was the non violent and non cooperation which was introduced by gandhi so within this slide we are going to look into that what is the rawlet act what is the punjab wrong what is the khilafat movement and how all these things resulted into the non cooperation movement non cooperation movement which was the first mass movement launched by gandhi in india so while coming to the non cooperation movement we are going to look into the background that why did it occur in february 1919 two rawlet bills were introduced in the legislative assembly first thing to know about is why these bills were called as the rawlet there was a sedition committee set in the year 1918 and it was chaired by the justice rawlet the major objective of this committee was to examine the revolutionary activities which occurred in india during 1905 to 1908 i hope you remember while when we were discussing about the revolutionaries in india and abroad i told you that the revolutionary activities took place into two phases in india the first phase was during the anti partition movement or during the time period of 1905 to 1910 so during this period of time the britishers were trying to curb the revolutionary activities and for that in the year 1918 they established a committee which was called as the sedition committee and this committee was chaired by the justice rawlet and that is why the next year justice rawlet suggested to pass some bills and that is why it is called as the rawlet acts or till the time it was the bill let's see what were the recommendations or the suggestions that were given by justice rawlet under these two bills he basically suggested a system of the special courts also the detention without the trial for the two years the maximum period should be the two two years and the greater police powers this act authorized the government to imprison any person without trial and conviction of the court of law it also enabled the government to suspend the right of habeas corpus which had been the foundation of civil liberties in britain all indians deeply resented the rawlet act but it was left to gandhi to suggest opposition to the act as a constitutional methods to oppose the act failed gandhi finally decided to launch the rawlet satyagraha calling for a nation wide strike hartal accompanied by the fasting and prayer on the 6th of april and in addition civil disobedience of specific laws gandhi decided to oppose rawlet bills and launched a satyagraha which intended to mobilize public opinion against it he founded satyagraha sabha at bombay on 24th of february 1919 He called for an all India hartal on specified days and asked the people to resort to fasting and prayer. It was the first country wide agitation by Gandhi. During the month of March and April 
the country witnessed a remarkable political awakening in india there were hartals strikes processions and demonstrations these hartals took place in different parts of india and a major impact of the anti rolet satyagraha was felt in the amritsar in amritsar the two local leaders the kichlu and the satyapal who were protesting against the anti rolet satyagraha were deported on the 9th of april by the arrest of these local leaders it led to an attack on the symbols of the british authority people were very much agitated that the local leaders have been deported on the basis of the anti rolet act so on the 11th of april the martial law was clamped with general dais in command the situation in the amritsar was getting worse initially the people who were protesting against the anti rolet satyagraha they were deported then the martial law was also applied in the amritsar people were furiated against the british policies so they decided to assemble themselves into a peaceful and armed arm, unarmed manner so on the 13th of april a peaceful unarmed crowd which was collected in an enclosed ground this enclosed ground was called as the jallianwala bagh they came to attend a public meeting obvious of the ban was brutally massacred without warning general dyer ordered the forces to open fire all the people who were present in that ground and this event is called as the jallianwala massacre the, this massacre shocked the entire nation with horror and fired patriotic minds with aggressive determination for which vengeance gandhi overwhelmed by the total atmosphere of violence withdrew the movement on 18th april after confessing this as a himalayan blunder gandhi commented jallianwala bagh massacre as the himalayan blunder the jallianwala bagh massacre exposed the inhuman approach of the british since the peaceful crowd was butchered and killed in the firing without any warning by general dyer although general dyer was removed from active service but he was hailed as a hero by many europeans this was adding gross insult to injury never again could the british people command moral respect in india Rabindranath Tagore renounced the knighthood conferred on him by the king. Mahatma Gandhi declared that the cooperation in any shape or form with this satanic government is sinful. This resulted into the journey of Mahatma Gandhi from cooperator to non-cooperator. During this period of time a third great wrong was added to the Rolet Acts and the Punjab atrocities which was called as the Khilafat Rock this was the harsh treatment meted out by Turkey against uh, harsh treatment meted out to Turkey after its defeat in the first world war again reminding you guys that this is a time period of the first world war and british was on the winning team and turkey which was dominated by muslims they lost that battle and due to which the britishers were treating the turkey on a very bad terms the sultan of turkey ruler of the ottoman empire was considered by many to be the caliph or the khalif or successor of the prophet muhammad as such he was looked on as the head of the worldwide muslim community moreover the economic situation in the post war years became alarming with rise in the prices increased burden of taxes and rents all sections of the society suffered from economic hardships all these reasons brought non cooperative attitude towards the government in the mind of gandhi he became a critic of british rule and supported khilafat movement muslim leaders formed all india khilafat conference in september 1919 at lucknow and started the khilafat movement in india and demanded the restoration of khalifa's position they had three central demands which were as follows the caliph must retain control over the muslim sacred places because the caliph was considered as the leader of the worldwide muslim community 
Secondly, they demanded that the caliph must be left with sufficient territory to enable him to defend the Islamic faith. And thirdly, Arabia, Syria, Iraq and Palestine must remain under the Muslim sovereignty. These were the three demands that were raised under the Khilafat movement. Khilafat leaders were eager in enlisting the support of Hindus. Muslims were aware about this fact that this movement could not gain a lot of momentum until and unless the Hindus are not participating in it. Again, I want to remind you that under the Lucknow Pact, which was signed in the year 1916, Indian National Congress agreed to help or to join the hands with the All India Muslim League and vice versa. Gandhi saw in this an opportunity to bring the Hindu and Muslim unity against the Britishers. There are two, three things that I want to tell you. Uh, you remember that after the Lord Curzon's policy or uh, step taken to partition the Bengal, one of the reasons why he partitioned the Bengal was to practice divide and rule policy. Lord Curzon's or the Britishers wanted Hindus and Muslims to be separate and if they will be divided, it will be easier for the Britishers to conquer over the India. So the Gandhi was trying to basically build up the relationship between the Hindus and Muslims. Firstly, it was done by the Lucknow Pact and secondly, now in the Khilafat movement. Gandhi embraced the cause of his Muslims and in November 1919, he was elected the president of the All India Khilafat Conference at Delhi. Initially, the Khilafat leaders limited their actions to meetings, petitions and deputations in favor of the Khilafat. Later, a militant trend emerged, demanding an active agitation such as stopping all cooperation with the British. The publication of the terms of the treaty with Turkey, which was very harsh, and also the publication of the Hunter Committee report on Punjab disturbances in May 1920 infuriated the Indians. Thus, at one level, Indian political situation also merged with the issue of Khilafat. So basically, there was a mergence of all the bad things happening in the Indian scenario at that period of time. This resulted into the Central Khilafat Committee, which met in at Allahabad in the June 1920 and they decided to launch the program of non-cooperation towards the government. This included the boycotting of titles conferred by the government. Secondly, boycott of the civil services, army and the police, that is all the government jobs. Thirdly, the non-payment of taxes to the government. And lastly, they decided that the 1st of August 1920 was the date to start the movement. An All India Hartal was organized under the Mahatma Gandhi's guidance. On the appointed day, Gandhi wrote to the Viceroy informing him of his plans. As a first gesture of non-cooperation, he returned the medals he had been awarded for his work in South Africa. This began as the launching of this non-cooperation movement. The movement was to be formally launched by Gandhi on 1st August 1920, which demanded the three things. Annulment of the Rawlet Act and remedifying the Punjab wrong. Secondly, remedifying the Khilafat wrong, that is, the British should adopt a lenient attitude towards Turkey. And thirdly, satisfying the nationalist urge for Swaraj. However, the established politicians of the Congress still had their doubts about a non-cooperation program. The Congress met in September at Calcutta with the main opposition led by C.R. Das and Motilal Nehru against the boycott of elections of central legislative councils. However, in the annual Indian National Congress session held at Nagpur in December 1920, C.R. Das changed his attitude and accepted the resolution of non-violent non-cooperation. The program of non-cooperation was accepted by the Congress as its own and included the surrender of titles and honours, triple boycott of schools, courts, councils, national schools and colleges were to be set up, national spinning and weaving was to be encouraged along with the promotion of khadi. 
thus the nagpur session committed the congress to a program of extra constitutional mass action enable the congress to fulfill its new commitment changes were introduced in its organization on gandhi's insistence the goal of the congress was changed from the attainment of self government by constitutional and legal means to the attainment of swaraj by peaceful and legitimate means the important changes included the constitution of a working committee secondly the organization of provincial congress committees on a linguistic basis and thirdly the membership fee was reduced to 4 annas per year the organization structure was both streamlined and democratized the adoption of the non cooperation movement by the congress gave it a new energy and from january 1921 it began in full swing and registered considerable success all over the country the non cooperation movement can be studied into the four phases the first phase is from january to march 1921 second phase from march to june 1921 third from july to november 1921 and the fourth phase is november 1921 to february 1922 Under the first phase, Gandhi, along with the Ali brothers who led the Khilafat movement, undertook a nationwide tour during which he addressed hundreds of meetings and met political workers. Thousands of students left government-controlled schools and colleges, joining the national ones. Many leading lawyers gave up their lucrative practices. However, the most successful item of the program was the boycott of foreign cloth, with the picketing of shops selling foreign cloth, a major form of boycott. Under the second phase, the Congress session took place at Vijayawada. It was decided that it should concentrate on collection of funds. enrollment of members and distribution of charkhas as a result a vigorous membership drive was launched and tilak swaraj fund was oversubscribed exceeding the target of rupees 1 crore charkhas were popularized on a wide scale and khadi became the uniform of the national movement during the third phase the movement gradually became more militant with the beginning of boycott and organization of public bonfires of foreign cloth on 17th november 1921 the prince of wales who arrived in india on an official visit was greeted with a nationwide hartal on that day bombay witnessed the break of the first violent riot of the movement targeting the europeans the anglo indians and the parsis in the city gandhi was incensed and full scale civil disobedience and the no tax campaign was postponed the whole sequence of events left gandhi profoundly disturbed about the recurrence of violence once mass civil disobedience was sanctioned the last phase of the movement nearly brought the government to its knees gandhi was under cons- under considerable pressure from the congress to start the phase of mass civil disobedience he was appointed as the sole authority on the issue the government ignored gandhi's appeal that unless it lifted the ban on civil liberties and released political prisoners he would be forced to go ahead with civil disobedience It was decided that an experimental no revenue campaign would be launched at Bardoli in February 1922. However, this did not happen as Chauri Chaura incident took place and Gandhi was fed up and called off the non-cooperation movement. So the breaking point of the non-cooperation movement was the Chauri Chaura incident. Let's look into that incident. What was this incident? This incident proved to be the last last straw for Gandhi. In February 1922, local volunteers had gathered to protest against police oppression and the high prices of certain articles. The police initially sought to deter them by firing in the air, but irritated by the behavior of some policemen, the crowd attacked them. The police opened fire and in retaliation, the crowd set fire to the local police station killing 22 policemen 
on hearing of the incident gandhi decided to abruptly call off the movement thus on 12th of february 1922 the non cooperation movement came to an end in the next class we are going to look into that why this movement was called off the different views of calling off this movement and the limitation and the significance of the non cooperation movement